Litany of Gratitude After the COVID Pandemic Let us approach the Lord who makes all things new for all the blessings and graces we received during the COVID pandemic. After every petition, let us say together, Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. For reminding us of the fragility of life, shielding us when no one else dared to shelter us, and opening our minds to what is really essential, let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. For allowing us to connect with one another with faith and love, despite the isolation that sickness had imposed on us, let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the heroic kindness of those who provided us with scientific, social, and spiritual help when doing so was both risky and life-threatening for them, let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the gift of newly discovered medicines and vaccines to combat the virus and the wonder of natural immunity, let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the gift of assuring presence when we were anxious and distressed, depressed and lonely and impatient during the pandemic, let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, no thought of ours is unknown to you. No tear we shed is unimportant to you. No joy we celebrate is alien to you. You entered our world of sickness, suffering, and death, and you know the fears we face. Accept our thanksgiving for your provident love during the COVID pandemic. As you wept at the death of Lazarus, breathe the breath of life everlasting on all those who died from the coronavirus. You have turned our fears into joy, and for this we thank and praise you. To you be glory, now and forever. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. Saint Michael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, in 1858, Our Lady appeared in Lourdes presenting herself as the Immaculate Conception. The apparition in Lourdes is the confirmation of God's promise. Our Lady 
is the confirmation of God's promise. And so we come here on her feast day so that she could confirm to us God's promise of healing in Jesus Christ, her Son. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Mass, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, O merciful God, protection in our weakness, that we who keep the memorial of the Immaculate Mother of God may, with the help of her intercession, rise up from our iniquities. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God called to Adam and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat. The man replied, The woman whom you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree. And so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, The serpent took me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be bound from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. To the woman he said, I will intensify the pangs of your childbearing. In pain shall you bring forth children, yet your urge shall be for your husband, and he shall be your master. To the man he said, Because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat, Cursed be the ground because of you. In toil shall you eat its yield all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to you as you eat of the plants of the field. 
by the sweat of your face shall you get bread to eat until you return to the ground from which you were taken. For you are dirt, and to dirt you shall return. The man called his wife Eve because she became the mother of all the living. For the man and his wife, the Lord God made leather garments with which he clothed them. The Lord God said, See, the man has become like one of us, knowing what is good and what is evil. Therefore, he must not be allowed to put out his hand to take fruit from the tree of life also, and thus eat of it and live forever. The Lord God, therefore, banished him from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which he had been taken. When he expelled the man, he settled him east of the Garden of Eden, and he stationed the cherubim and the fiery revolving sword to guard the way of the tree of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Before the mountains were begotten and the earth and the world were brought forth, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. You turn man back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men. For a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past, or as a watch of the night. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. You make an end of them in their sleep. The next morning, they're like the changing grass, which at dawn springs up anew, but by evening wilts and fades. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Please stand. does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days when there again was a great crowd without anything to eat, Jesus summoned the disciples and said, my heart is moved with pity for the crowd because they have been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them away hungry to their homes, they will collapse on the way 
and some of them have come a great distance. His disciples answered him, Where can anyone get enough bread to satisfy them here in this deserted place? Still he asked them, How many loaves do you have? They replied, Seven. He ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then, taking the seven loaves, he gave thanks, broke them, and gave them to his disciples to distribute, and they distributed them to the crowd. They also had a few fish. He said the blessing over them and ordered them distributed also. They ate and were satisfied. They picked up the fragments left over seven baskets. There were about 4,000 people. He dismissed the crowd and got into the boat with his disciples and came to the region of Dalmanutha. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. I am so happy to see a lot of people this morning at the Manila Cathedral. Tuwing Sabado po ay kaunti ang tao sa katedral. Dahil wala na kong mga pasok ang mga opisina sa paligid. Kaya tuwing araw ng Sabado, kapag maraming tao ay masayang masaya ako. Kaya lang medyo nag-alala ako para akong si Jesus sa Ebanghelyo. Nakita niya ang maraming tao at sabi niya sa sarili niya, wala akong ipapakain sa kanila. Wala rin ho akong paalmusal sa inyo, kagaya ni Jesus. But it is Jesus who we will receive in this celebration. And that is more than enough for all of us today. For the past days, we have been reading from the Gospel the ministry of Jesus. Jesus preaching the Word of God to the poor, to the persecuted. Jesus healing the sick, those who are assailed by evil spirits. Jesus healing the daughter of the Syrophoenician woman. And today, Jesus feeding the multitude with the multiplication of the loaves and the fish. And when the people saw all of these, they were able to say that Jesus is truly the fulfillment of God's promise to us. Nang nakita ng mga tao ang magagandang ginawa ni Jesus, nasabi nila sa kanilang sarili, si Jesus nga ang katuparan ng pangako ng Diyos. Siya ang tagapagpagaling, siya ang tagapagpahayag, siya rin ang tagapagpakain sa mga taong nagugutom. Jesus is truly the fulfillment of God's promise. But today, my dear brothers and sisters, we are presented with another character. And that is the mother of Jesus. We see in our first reading today from the book of Genesis the promise of God to Adam and Eve that 
the woman will bear a son. And that son will strike at the snake, at the serpent. So we are presented with another character, the woman. If Jesus is the fulfillment of the promise, then Mary, the woman, is the confirmation of the promise. Mary confirms what Jesus will fulfill. Kung si Jesus ang katuparan ng pangako, si Maria ang tagapagpatunay ng pangako ng Diyos. She always confirms to us the promise of God. That is why we celebrate today the Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes. Did you know that Our Lady of Lourdes confirmed the dogma of the Immaculate Conception? In 1854, Pope Pius IX proclaimed the dogma of the Immaculate Conception. And four years after, in 1858, Our Lady appeared in Lourdes. And when St. Bernadette asked her her name, she said, I am the Immaculate Conception. Mary is the confirmation of God's promise. Mary will always confirm what Jesus will fulfill. Kung si Jesus ang katuparan ng pangako, si Maria ang tagapagpatunay ng pangakong ito. Hindi ko po alam kung diyan sa inyong kinauupuan ay nakikita ninyo ang lumang altar ng Manila Cathedral no, doon sa likod. I don't know if uh, you can see it in our cameras or if our cameras could focus the altar. This was the altar of the cathedral that was consecrated in 1958, the old high altar of the cathedral. And you will see there Mary in the middle. On the left side, you will see characters of the Old Testament. On the right side, saints of Christianity. And all of them are looking up to Mary. As if Mary is strengthening all of them, confirming to them that God will fulfill His promise in Jesus. Kapag pinaghihinaan po tayo ng loob, kapag dumarating tayo at nararanasan ang sakit at karamdaman, kanino tayo tutungo? Kay Maria. Papatunayan at patotohanan niya sa atin na ang Diyos ay tapat sa kanyang pangako at tutuparin niya ang kanyang pangako kay Jesus na kanyang minamahal na anak. As I have always said to you in the past days, I have been seeing a lot of people who told me that, Father, kami po ay mga online mass goers ng Manila Cathedral. Nito kong mga nakaraang linggo ay mayroong isang pamilya na lumapit sa amin. At yung tatay ng pamilya, Sabi niya, Father, noong nakita ko po ang Immaculate Conception image, naiyak ako. At habang kinukwento niya sa akin niya, naiyak, naiiyak siya. Sabi niya, 
tatlong taon ko lang siyang pinapanood sa TV. At sabi niya, pangako ko sa sarili ko, kapag tapos na ang pandemic na ito at pwede na kaming magsimba, pangako ko, pupuntahan ko siya sa Manila Cathedral. Dahil tatlong taon ko siyang naging lakas kahit sa television lang. And now I am here, he said. I fulfilled my promise to her. But as I was thinking about this, tayo ba talaga ang tumupad ng pangako kay Maria? O baka si Maria ang nagpatunay sa atin na tinupad ng Diyos ang pangako niya sa iyo na makakarating ka sa simbahan na ito. At pagkatapos ng dalawang taon sa pandemic na ito, tinupad ng Diyos ang pangako niya sa iyo. Makita mo si Maria sa kanyang tahanan sa Manila Cathedral. I think, my dear brothers and sisters, it is not just us who fulfills our promise to Mary to visit her in her home here at the cathedral. I think it is Mary who confirms to us once again the promise of God that Jesus will fulfill the promise of God to all of us. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue this celebration of the Eucharist, as we look to Mary, who appeared in Lourdes, let Mary be the confirmation to us of God's promise. And Mary will always confirm what Jesus will fulfill. Amen. Please all stand. God of mystery, you are close to us and you know what disturbs us. In union with Mary, the mother of your son and our mother, we call on you in times of sickness and distress. For every petition, let us say, Lord, we place our hope in you. Lord, we place our hope in you, that the Pope, the bishops, priests, and religious may be faithful to their commitment to God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord we, we place, place our, our hope, hope in, in you, that believers may strengthen their trust and confidence in your help, and that they may be ready to obey your will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we, we place, place our, our hope, hope in, in you, you, that those who are tormented by hidden pain may bear their crosses bravely when no immediate relief is available. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord we, we place, place our, our hope, hope in you, that the sick may find healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord we, we place, place our, our hope, hope in, in you, you that our departed relatives and friends may finally receive their heavenly reward, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord we, we place, place our, our hope, hope in, in you. We continue to pray for all the victims of the tragic earthquake in Turkey and Syria, for those who have perished, for their families who are suffering, and for all those who are doing the rescue and search mission. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord we, we place, place our, our hope, hope in you. you. In silence, let us now present to the Lord our personal petitions and for all the intentions offered in this Mass. Lord, help us 
that we may be ready to entrust ourselves to you as Mary did. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. all stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Receive, O Lord, we ask, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that through the intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your Son, no petition may go unanswered and no request be made in vain. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise Bless and glorify your name on the feast day of the Blessed Ever Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, 
and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver, deliver us from, from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, 
Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold, the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am, am not, not worthy, worthy that you should enter, enter under my roof, roof but, but only say, say the, the word, word and, and my, my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. Be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen.
Please all stand. Let us pray. Having been made partakers of eternal redemption, we pray, O Lord, that we who commemorate the mother of your Son may glory in the fullness of your grace and experience its continued increase for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. After the celebration of the Mass, we will have the celebration of the anointing, the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. May we ask everyone to just um, remain in your seats as we begin this celebration. And for those who may want to also avail of the sacrament of confession, I saw Father Bong Darondon also pass by and uh, he will be uh, giving the sacrament of confession, I think, at the baptistry chapel. So if for those who may want to confess, uh, you may do so at the baptistry chapel of the cathedral. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Oh, 